Uh, illegal migrants, meanwhile, surged at the southern border ahead of the end of Title 42. Look at this group. This is the biggest group we've ever seen. Next week, uh, Title 42 will go away. But look what happened yesterday. Over 1,000 migrants crossing into El Paso, Texas on Sunday after Mexican police escorted and released nearly 20 buses full of migrants to various non-government organizations in a Mexican town near the U.S. border, right near Juarez, where we had uh, a live program a couple of years ago. This program originated out of Juarez, uh, El Paso, uh, across from Juarez, rather. The El Paso sector also seeing more than 2,600 migrant crossings in a 24-hour span from Friday to Saturday. But this picture says it all. This is what is going on at our border. Lines of people wanting in, getting in, and then blending in with the population. Joining us right now is former acting DHS secretary and executive director at the America First Policy Institute. Chad Wolf is here. Chad, when you look at that picture, a thousand people in one shot. I know that it's been seven, eight thousand people a day overall, but they're in different areas of, of Texas. But this is in one spot in El Paso, 1,000 people. What can you tell us? Well, Maria, thanks for having me on. Those pictures and those images are the story of the Biden administration's failed policy. That's what a failed strategy looks like, those images specifically. Their strategy is cruel, it's inhumane, and it's jeopardizing national security at the end of the day. They have no intention of solving this crisis. They would have done that. For 22, 23 months now, we continue to see these illegal apprehension numbers continue to skyrocket. As you indicated, they're at 8,000 a day, and that's before Title 42. Uh, goes away. After that, after the 21st of December, you're likely to see those numbers and those images increase because, again, there is no strategy in place. The administration should be looking at measures to enforce border security and send a signal to the cartels, the human smugglers and traffickers that it's not okay to continue to push thousands and hundreds of thousands of folks across that line. But they, they have no intention of doing that, unfortunately. Well, I mean, you know, obviously anybody overseas who wants to come here, have babies here, have their family here, now's the time to do it. They know it's wide open and they will get away with it and they'll just blend in and they could cut the line of all of those people who've been waiting for a year to get a green card. And you mentioned really something very critical, and that is these drug cartels. I'm told they're taking home $300 million a week. These massively dangerous cartels are the ones who are making the decisions of who comes into America and who doesn't. And yet National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan facing questions over the end of Title 42 did not have many answers. Watch this. Uh, are there national concerning concerns over the Title 42 expiration? So the team has been working very hard to ensure that uh, we are taking steps to be able to manage the expiration of Title 42 and to put in place a process that will be orderly and humane. And we believe that in doing so, we can protect our national security concerns. So, so what is this, Chad? Is this just gobbledygook? What exactly are they doing working hard when we just saw yesterday 1,000 people come in or get, getting ready to come in? Well, I think... I yeah, the two words that he continues to use that we that we hear from this administration now for almost two years is orderly and humane. And what they don't talk about is actually protecting Americans and bringing some uh, sovereignty back to our borders. That's what they're not talking about, because, again, they have no intention of doing that. So whatever they're working on, they're hard at work, they talk about on Title 42. Uh, it's great. Where's it been for 22 months? They talked about a plan, uh, Maria, if you recall, back in April, of uh, sort of forecasting when Title 42 would go away, and they, they outlined the six-point plan. That six-point plan, I think this is important, talks about nothing about actually enforcing the law along that border. It just simply talks about managing the crisis, trying to process more and more of these migrants into the country quicker and quicker and faster so that we don't have lines and they're not at shelters. Well, if you do that, the cartels and the traffickers know that you're doing that. And guess what? They're going to continue to send more and more of these individuals to the border. So the plan in place and the strategy that they have, if they don't change course, is going to continue to get worse and worse, particularly after Title 42 goes away. So I think that's what's the most concerning thing. If you're a Border Patrol agent on that line and you've been in the middle of this crisis for almost two years, you don't see an end in sight because you're not hearing a strategy from your political leadership in this administration. 
Well, I mean, look, Jake Sullivan has his talking points. Karine Jean-Pierre has her talking points. But the reality is the pictures that we're watching right now. Look, you were the DHS secretary. I want to get your take on something. Why was it that the Mexican police were taking all of these people in all of these buses? So what's going on with the Mexican police? I thought that the Biden administration had to deal with the Mexicans, uh, that they were going to help stop this. So that's one question. And the second question is, what kind of benefits do these illegal migrants get when they are in America? What kind of pressure or money is being spent on them to the detriment of American citizens who might need that support? Well, it's a great question on the Mexican authorities. What they were doing escorting those buses, I think, is anyone's guess. Uh, but the problem is that the Biden administration is not putting enough pressure on the Mexican government to do more. We saw that during the Trump administration. We put immense pressure on them to step up to the plate. Look, they don't want to do this at the end of the day because it's easier when you have these hundreds of thousands of folks traveling through Mexico. They don't want them to stay in Mexico, but that puts a burden on their government, their facilities. They are happy to let them flow all the way to the United States. So you've got to get serious with the Mexican government and hold them accountable. Make sure that there are consequences for them not doing their job at the end of the day. Regarding benefits, when these individuals come in and they're released into American communities, they're all eligible. Most, if not all, are eligible for work permits and for some set of benefits, all provided by the American taxpayer using, <laughs> using our resources. Uh, the administration knows this. They know that there is an immense amount of fraud in the asylum system. They have no intention of fixing this. And why do I say that? Because you see those images and you see the numbers being released into American communities. Wow every day and we know that the vast majority of them 85 to 90 percent will never qualify for asylum but we also know that this administration will never remove them because they have given instructions to ICE officers not to remove these individuals. Yeah so what is Democrat California Governor Gavin Newsom doing? He visited the southern border yesterday. His visit comes less than one week after President Biden said that he would not visit because there are more important things going on, the president said. So what is Gavin Newsom trying to do here? What is he going to do about this? Well, I don't know that he's doing anything. He went down to the border and talked about, again, using those buzzwords of orderly and humane processing. When you hear that and when the viewers hear those words, what they mean is we are going to let these individuals come across the border and into American communities every day. Uh, they again, I keep going back. They don't want to enforce the law. They need to enforce the law and bring some deterrence back into the system where we're going to continue to see these numbers. Well, we'll see if Gavin Newsom does anything about it or if this was just a very good photo op for him. Chad Wolf, thanks very much for the info. Good to catch up with you. We so appreciate it. Chad Wolf joining us this morning in Washington. Thank you, sir.